Retiring early is a dream for many, but it's not just about money, it's about being ready for life's challenges. Everybody wants to retire someday, preferably sooner rather than later. What's your dream retirement? Is it to retire somewhere sunny and warm, spend your days on the beach, drinking pina coladas, playing lots of golf, the stresses and worries of work, a long distant memory? Or maybe try something new. It's okay to carry on working in retirement part time, maybe in a completely different field to the one that you've been working in. Or perhaps you're somebody that wants to start a business, a side hustle, to support yourself in retirement as an add-on to your pension. There's no doubt about it, retirement can be fun and exciting, an opportunity to spend that money that we've been saving up all those years and enjoy the free time with no pressures of work. But it can also be challenging if you're not prepared. Obviously, you need to be financially prepared, but you also need to be emotionally prepared. And that's something that I definitely was not when I retired 19 years ago. Like most people, I thought that retirement would be fun and enjoyable. I would have no worries at all, but I was in for a big surprise. There are a few things that I wish I'd known before I retired early. Everybody thinks about the financial side of retirement, savings, pensions, investments. In this video, I'll explore the things that weren't anything to do with financial, more the emotional side of retirement that I wish I'd known before I retired early at 44. First up is having something to retire to. We paint this idyllic picture of retirement as something to strive towards. But if you don't have a plan of what retirement looks like, short term, medium term and long term, and you just retire, all of a sudden, like me, you can feel lost and even overwhelmed. You might feel like there's unfinished business at work or in your career. That's how I felt for quite a while. Let's face it, work is a big part of our lives. From early adulthood through to retirement, we're working five days a week, nine to five and more, and then suddenly it all stops. Work was your whole routine, your entire adult life, building to this moment, and here it is, retirement. So what now? What next? Making sure you have a plan of what you're retiring to is an essential exercise for us all to do. What is it that's going to excite you the most? There's probably only so much golf you can play, or gardening, or going on holiday. Let's face it, gardening and mowing the lawn will probably only keep you going in the summer. So what are you going to do in the winter? Now that you're retired, there are a lot more things that you can do. Spend more time with family. Do some volunteering perhaps. Maybe even buy an RV and travel around Europe, the USA, Canada, New Zealand, Australia, wherever you are based. What does an ideal retirement look like for you? Does it contain a little bit of work? Work for a lot of people brings a sense of productivity, a sense of purpose and a sense of connection with other people. Understand what those things are for you and make a plan for what you're retiring into. If you don't, you might feel unfulfilled. You might have all the money to do what you want to do, but just don't know what it is that you want to do. And you end up being bored and wasting your precious time. It's common for retirees to feel lost after leaving jobs, especially if they don't have a new plan or purpose. Having a clear vision of what you want to do in retirement can lead to a more fulfilling life. Think about the hobbies that you've always wanted to pursue, maybe volunteering in the community or even taking in part-time work. These activities can provide structure and motivation Motivation. A sense of purpose is crucial. Without it, retirees often feel adrift. Identify what drives you and what will keep you motivated. I found that dedicating a few hours each week to part-time work, doing coaching, mentoring and business advisory gave my retirement more meaning. What is it for you? Mastering that musical instrument perhaps? Or helping out at a local charity? Imagine the joy of finally having time to do that. So start planning now. Think about what you love doing and how you can incorporate that into your retirement. My second thing is adjusting to more free time. Retirement means a lot of free time. This can initially be hard to adjust to and finding ways to be productive during the day can be challenging. A few weeks after I left the workforce, I realized that I missed the social aspect. I missed the challenges and the deadlines even. I even missed some of the meetings, bizarrely, but not all of them. I had a lot of free time that I didn't know what to do with right away. I went from leading a team of over 70 people, the top dog in the business that I founded, I went into the office every day. I guided people. I organized people. I had their respect. I was at the height of my career. And then, after I retired, I found myself at home with nothing to do. That is a big change. And it was a big psychological adjustment for me to go from the top of my career to absolutely nothing. Many retirees create new routines to help them manage their time better. Establishing a routine can help you be productive 
and fulfilled. Without a plan, boredom can set in really quickly. Some people even return to work to fill the void. Consider setting goals, using time blocks and exploring new interests. These strategies can help you make the most of your free time. My third thing is co-workers will drift away. After retiring, many of your co-workers won't stay in touch with you. This change may be surprising and take some time for you to adjust to. It's not that they never liked you and they were just playing at it. That's not actually the case. It's just that they've got new priorities, priorities which are different to yours. They're still at work and they're still playing the work game. You're not. You are no longer an important piece in the game of work. When I retired, I was surprised at how quickly I lost touch with my colleagues and it took me some time to adjust to this new reality. If you want to maintain those relationships, you're going to have to put a bit of extra effort in. Be proactive, reach out regularly, plan meetups and stay connected. That's all you can do. If your ex-work colleagues don't reciprocate, then just move on. Be prepared for this change and understand that it's just a natural part of retiring. Focus on building new connections, which brings me on to my fourth thing, make new friends. As I've already discussed, work relationships will fade and many of your friends will probably still be working if you've retired early. So making new friends in retirement is crucial if you don't want to be lonely. Join clubs, participate in community activities or take up new hobbies. These are great ways to meet like-minded people. A strong social network can lead to a more fulfilling and enjoyable retirement. New friendships bring fresh perspectives and experiences. I found that joining a local investment group introduced me to a wonderful new set of friends. It became a regular and enriching part of my routine. Some of those people that I met in that investment club are now some of my best friends and I didn't even know them when I retired from work. Don't wait for friends to come to you. Be proactive in seeking out social opportunities. Get out there and build new relationships. My fifth thing is retirement doesn't mean stopping work altogether. As I mentioned earlier, when I retired from work, I missed the social social interactions that work brings. Many retirees return to work because they miss the social engagement and satisfaction that it brings. If you're retiring early in particular, you'll still have a lot of energy. You'll still have a lot of ideas and creativity, things that you want to do. Just because you're retired doesn't mean you do nothing. For a lot of people, it might mean that they'll transition to something else. Many people who retire early and some people who retire in their 60s at normal retirement age actually go back to work. They go back to work because they like it. They like the engagement. They like the creativity. And a lot of people end up starting small businesses after they retire. Research has actually shown that people in their 50s and 60s who start businesses are actually three times more likely to succeed than people in their 30s. The reason being, they've got a lot of experience of work, business and life, which gives them an edge if they want to start a small business. That's what I did. I started a small business doing consulting and advisory work and it was the best thing I could do. It kept my mind sharp. It kept me in the game without the long hours and pressures that I had in full-time work. If you've got an idea or some useful experience, you should try it. Part-time work offers flexibility and social interaction. It also offers a sense of purpose and it can also provide extra income during retirement, which could come in useful. One of the best aspects of becoming self-employed and starting a small business is you can set your own hours around your schedule. It's not nine to five, Monday to Friday. You can work long hours if you want and then take a long break and go traveling. Or you can just work a few hours a week like me. If you miss the routine of work, it can be very fulfilling and rewarding. My sixth thing is switch from a saving to a spending mindset. Once you've reached retirement, it's not about saving money. It's about spending it, but spending it wisely. For many people, this change of approach can feel uncomfortable. You might need to rethink your expenses and large purchases. Consider downsizing or relocating to a more affordable area. Don't change your car as often. Make do with a smaller capsule wardrobe. This is the time to spend your money on experiences, not stuff. If you've retired early in particular, this is a great opportunity for you to travel. Something you probably couldn't do as much of when you were working because you only had four to six weeks a year of holiday. Now you haven't got that restriction, so make the most of it. Simpler living arrangements can give you more freedom and flexibility to enjoy the other aspects of life like travel or hobbies. A few years ago, my wife and I moved to a smaller home, about half the size of the one that we brought our family up in. I found that moving to a smaller home had lots of benefits. It costs less to run. It's more convenient for everything. Doctors, supermarket, restaurants, cafes, and we only need one car now. 
Simpler living has changed how I live and it's reduced the cost of living enormously, which means I can put my money to other things like traveling. My seventh thing is communication and planning with family. Discussing your plans and financial matters with your family is critical. It helps align retirement goals and expectations, ensuring everyone is on the same page. Your spouse or partner might retire many years after you, or they might even have retired before you. It's important to understand each other's hopes and to plan together to avoid conflicts. Regular discussions, setting joint goals, and being open about your expectations are key to a harmonious retirement. I found that regular communication with my wife made the transition a lot smoother. I shared my vision for what I wanted to do with her and we worked together to make it happen. I knew that me leaving work was going to disrupt her lifestyle potentially. I wanted to make sure that my transition from spending long hours of work to always being at home was handled smoothly. And that meant talking through things with my wife and making plans together. In the early days of my retirement, it didn't go quite as smoothly as I'd hoped. I was in the way quite a bit until I found new things to do. You might find that that's the case too. If you do, hang in there because things will get better. Those are the seven lessons that I learned when I retired early. And hopefully they've been useful to you. Here's a quick recap. One, have something to retire to. Two, adjust to more free time. Three, understand that co-workers will drift away. Four, make new friends. Five, retirement doesn't mean stopping work altogether. Six, switch from a savings to a spending mindset. And seven, communication and planning with family are key. Retirement is a significant life change. Being prepared for these lessons can make your transition smoother and more fulfilling. Watch this video next if you want to find out more about how to lead a more fulfilling and exciting retirement life. Thanks for watching.